Hello and welcome to the TNT podcast, Tim and Ted. I'm your host, Tim, and my co-host is also here, obviously, which is Ted. Yeah, hello. What is up? What is up? So this is, I've I've never done anything like this before, neither has Ted. Basically what we're going to be doing is just going to be talking about stuff. I mean, everything going on in the world right now, I think it's obvious what this first episode would be about which is COVID-19 or coronavirus and just different ways it's affected us personally. And yeah, we'll go from there. So Ted, if you'd like to start how it's affected your day-to-day life. So for my day-to-day life, it's affected me pretty good. Uh, can't go to school anymore. I would say everything with online classes. Uh, I lost we'll two into. jobs. Yeah. Which we'll get into in uh, another episode. Uh, but for for me personally, I, I've lost two jobs because of this, and uh, I worked as instructors in, in two different places, and um, just uh, it closed down last month, and I've been out of job out of two jobs for a month, so it's been it's been hefty because I have no income coming in, so it's it's tough to maneuver around all that stuff. So it's weird having a lot of time in your hands now. Yeah, true. I mean, just a little background. Me and Ted have been friends for, geez, how many years now? Years? Probably like 10 years. It's It's been a fairly long time. We played baseball, soccer as kids. Now we're in our 20s, and here we are. <laughs> yep, yep, here we are. But just a little background. Yep. But as for me, how uh, coronavirus has affected my day-to-day life is, just like he said, basically in every way. You know, as I said, you know, we've been friends for years. You know, we hang out all the time. But with this, obviously, with social distancing and where I work, which I will get into, I don't want to put him at risk. Don't want to put anybody else at risk. But, yeah, basically, can't go out anywhere. I can't, you know, can't simple go sit down, have a bite to eat somewhere can't see any of my family like just last week it was one of my cousin's birthdays and normally you know we'd have a big family get together you know have dinner cake no we literally went to their house ted i I don't even i didn't even tell you this we went to their house all in separate cars all stayed probably like 20 feet from each other not even like they that family stayed on their porch and we stayed all by our cars and we said oh happy birthday and before they wow. even came out, we ran all you know his gifts to the uh, to their porch and texted them, "Hey, we're here." <laughs> oh, and basically, had to from the end to from the street to their house, you know, not even spend some time. We were there like not even ten minutes. Wow. And it's just not even being able to, you know, celebrate really. You know, my little yeah. cousin getting older, we can't even do that simple you know dinner cake nothing wow i've seen a lot of those people like like i've seen like videos on the news or anything like or some social media outlets like uh, instagram twitter and i've seen like people just drive by just honking saying happy birthday and just put their stuff like right next to their porch like how you guys did and you know it's literally what we're what everything's come to now you know yeah, I mean, it's for the better, especially at least in my circumstance where I work. It would be for me to go in their house, have dinner with them, you know, whatever it is, it'd be putting them at a very much heightened risk. Right. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll get into that. I'm a manager at Walmart, and obviously, you know, Walmart's known for its clientele. <laughs> Um, so being in a retail environment, you know, as, as an, a quote unquote essential worker, you know, and my manager status, I'm more or less not forced to go into work, but I'm, I'm needed there. Like I know if I was to say, Hey, can't come in guys, you know, it, it cause a lot more, you know, stress for my my staff and my fellow managers, you know, I'm not in a position to where 
I can take, say, a leave of absence. Um, I, I'll, I'll get into my work now. I've been at Walmart for almost three years now. And obviously, you know, in our life, lifetimes, we've never dealt with a pandemic like this. Like, in 2009, we had, you know, the swine flu pandemic, which I actually did have the swine flu. And obviously survived. Because, you know, the death rate on that was... What was it? I think we looked it up. It was like 0.8. It, it was something like that. Yeah, it was a very uh, low percent death rate. Yeah, both me and my sister actually did have it. Um, mm. But back to Walmart. Um, you know, it's dealing with a lot lower staffing. You know, most of my associates are all on leaves of absences. Whether, obviously, personal reasons, you know, they're... They don't feel comfortable going into work, which I, I can't blame them at all. I mean, of course, if I wasn't, if I was a regular associate, you bet your ass I would not be there. Mm-hmm. Out of the safety for my family, that would have been my choice. But my position, I'm not really, wouldn't say able to do it, but as I said, it 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 caused more issues. Um. But being that we're recording this the end of Easter Day, we had probably, in my, my store, is, it's not a super center, but it's gets a lot of traffic. Yeah. In a time where everybody's supposed to be in their house, self-quarantining, social distancing, you would be surprised how many people came to Walmart for non-essential items on Easter. It didn't slow down until maybe five, six o'clock. It wow. was still like busy. People coming in, getting their TVs, bikes, clothing, all this stuff that's, you know, you don't need in this moment. And I'm sure it's like this everywhere. Every business that is still open now, it's, you know, it's going to be like that. If I didn't work retail, I would only leave my house. I'm out of milk. Let me go run, get milk, get in, get out. So I'm not putting, you know, these employees at risk by me being there and being in contact. And it's just I know no matter what people are going to people are going to go buy stuff if we're open. I mean, a little more context, we're from New Jersey. So our governor has uh, imposed several, you know, aggressive social distancing tactics. As far as, you know, obviously, they've everywhere is banned. You know, large gatherings. Um, Governor Murphy, he also just the other day slashed the maximum amount of people that can be in a building. And I believe ours, it's around like two hundred people. So if we get close to that. We got to shut it down, have people, you know, form a line outside, have them six feet apart. We have like tape on the ground so people know to stay six feet apart, at least. Oh, wow. You know, let, let people check out, leave, check out, leave. Then we start letting more people in. Um, the mask, the mask, yeah, the, with, mask uh, yes. the mandatory mask now. Yes, that's another thing governor signed into law that in order to go into any establishment to where you'd come into contact with people as far as like ordering takeout from a restaurant or going into walmart target stop and shop anywhere you are you have to wear a mask bandana scarf something along the lines of that to cover your face it is written state law so uh, now it's, it's, we have to have people wow. at the doors, not only, you know, counting how many people are coming in and going so we can get, it, you know, a count of how many people are in the building in case, you know, we're getting close to our max capacity now. Now it's also we have to look out. If someone doesn't have a mask. We cannot let them in. Which I've had people, you know, me being a manager, if a regular associates at the door having trouble with someone they call me over and I have to go deal with it now and you know this person's fighting me and I'm like 
look, buddy, call Governor Murphy. It's state law. Like, I literally had someone the other day blow right past the person as they were yelling at them, blow right past them, not saying anything, husband and wife, get a cart, go to start shopping, and I'm like, like, excuse me, like, it is state law. We are not permitted to let you in the building unless you have some sort of face covering. And they're dis not even, they're ignoring me, ignoring me. And I'm like starting to raise my voice like, hello, we cannot let you in. I'm If you do not have a face mask, something along the lines of that, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. And they start saying, oh, we don't, we don't live in a communist country. That's not a law. And I'm like, yes, it is. It's a law just signed in. They're arguing with me that it's a law. And I'm like, Look, call Governor Murphy. <laughs> this ain't no, this ain't no Walmart law uh, policy. This ain't no Target policy. This is state law for the moment. Yeah, it's nothing that we you can't fight. It's all yeah. the way up top, I've, basically. I've had to just tonight. I've had to kick how many people? At least 15, 20 people. I've had to kick them out. Wow. Or not really, not kick them out, but not permit them to enter. Just because they're not wearing a mask, or they come in with a paper towel over the face, I'm like, no, that that, that yeah. does not count. Nah, some um, sort of some sort of protection. Yeah, bandana, some... scarf, not a t-shirt, not a like I just said, a paper towel. That don't work. That's not gonna yeah. work. But yeah. at least for Walmart, See, I can't talk for Target, Stop and Shop, elsewhere. Walmart, I feel like they have been handling it very well. This whole situation, as I said, I've worked there almost three years now. Not saying I'm an expert on, you know, how they've been. But they've handled this pandemic fairly well, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Like, they stopped, they started limiting people before it was even state law. They got us, um masks before it was even state law gloves they've always had hand sanitizer they've available for us you know and they had us putting stickers and stuff on the floor for social distancing you know having someone who answers our phones you know make announcements every so often saying remember to social distance so i they've, they've handled it fairly well in my opinion i mean it's not this isn't something you can easily prepare for Something that, you know, we thought was coming when the year went 2020. Don't think any anyone thought that we'd be dealing with a pandemic of this size. And it's getting worse and worse every day. Yeah. I mean, New Jersey alone, I think we're at like 61,000 cases. I think it's just below 62. Then New York is... What New is York's that? just... Oh God! One fifty, I think it was that, or might probably even more now. I'll just look. in the city alone, just in the city alone, it's literally like almost what? Hell, it has to be almost a hundred thousand by now. It's unbelievable how many New York's cases actually, are there. New York State's actually at one hundred ninety thousand. Wow! According to Johns that's, Hopkins University, that's a good source to use too. They they're very good at um, like, uh, getting numbers and stuff like that. New York City is at 104,000. Wow. Just the city alone. That's just crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, just to think about it, though, because it's like they everybody, like, lives on top of each other, so it's so easy for that virus just to spread so, like so wildfire. So populated, just like New Jersey. Yeah. That's why the yeah. two states are having this big of an issue. Because New Jersey is a tiny-ass state, and we hold 9 million people. Yeah. And then, Maybe just a little over that. Yeah, and then New York probably has that many people in just that little area. Like those, that little area alone. Just that area has probably 8, 9 million people in it. That's it's it's a big reason why it's so bad. That's why, you know, I feel like Governor Murphy's handling it very well. He's still, yeah, him and Cuomo are handling it as best as they possibly could at exactly. this point. They are. So, I mean, the policies they're putting in as in, like, social distancing, state shutdown, I mean, like, around us, you know, obviously all the food places are takeout or delivery. You can't sit down. Even in, 
my Walmart. We have a subway. They're all there. Chairs, they're all up. Not allowed to sit down. Just it's, get up and go. Yep, yeah, this is the most bizarre thing I've you know, ever it's seen. Like, you wouldn't believe it until it's true. Because it feels like we're in like a movie. And it's like it's like a whole plot. It's like a leading up to the halfway point. We're it's literally like whole... living the movie Contagion. <laughs> For real. It's, un- it's unbelievable. But like I said, like even with like, you know, how this started, like, you know, you know, saying that, oh, it's not spread through human contact. It's saying, you know, it's something totally different, but it turns out that it is. It is. And like, say I go, <laughs> I cough. You know, that air and the particles are projected feet in front of you. Yeah. So even if we're, I'm standing here, you're standing six feet in front of me and I say, cough or sneeze the air still travels that far especially with a sneeze that's even worse mm-hmm. that's unless you how... don't unless you cover it unless you cover it then well yeah it'll then be it... okay but if i just sneeze out in the open then it's being launched exactly but still though even if you cough in your like here or on your hand think about it though if you keep doing it like that it's still it's exactly. still kind of screwed like, that's the problem with these, like, masks and everything. Now that I'm forced to wear it at work, as fa- as long as I am in the building, it's not even, like, an area where, like, I'm in contact with customers. If I'm in an office, if I'm in our back room, if I'm in a break room, I still have to wear it. It's not like it's where most of the people are. If I'm in the building, if anyone's in the building, they have to wear it. If I walk mm-hmm. outside... Yep, I take that thing off. Oh, it hurts my ears. And even... I, oh, my God, it tickles my freaking nose, too. Is it, like, one of those, like, surgical masks? Is it, like, one of those, like, type deals? Or is it something different? No, it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can show you a picture. Okay. Because... Um, oh, wow. Okay, I, I, yeah. That's one of those surgical masks. Yeah. But the thing, like, just with talking, the thing constantly comes down, and then I find myself fixing it. You know, I, I carry hand sanitizer on me at all times. I don't even know if I told you. Oh, God. I got this <laughs> huge thing of hand wow, sanitizer. Wow, that giant, giant thing of hand sanitizer. Wow. Oh, yeah. I have this thing. You know, I constantly use hand sanitizer, constantly wash my hands. But then I still find myself fixing this mask. You know, it, it's to Just the point where like, it's, you know. Yeah, it's just, it's just, anno- it's, it's annoying. It's annoying and weird because it's something that not you never, to. yeah, exactly. Not used to doing. Yeah. I'm not used to having to when do I, it. When I had the swine flu, you know, now, Jesus, over 10 years ago, I, I, I had to wear those. But it was only, you know, I was quarantined in my room at the time. Um, I only had to wear it when I was outside of my room. But, you know, this 10 years ago, now I have to wear it every day for however long I'm there. 9, 10, 11, 12 hours, however long of a shift it's going to wind up being. Right. That brings another point. Because of, you know, all these people, which I, I can't blame them for being you know scared about going to work especially in a retail environment when you're coming into contact with hundreds of people a day at least maybe even thousands yeah i mean it's just insane because that means everyone else has to pick up all this extra slack and it's just days are becoming longer and longer like last yeah. weekend, it was twelve hour Saturday and Sunday. Was surprised the past two days this weekend. I only had to do a regular shift, didn't have to stay any extra. But hey, overtime, not gonna complain. No, of course not. Just cracking in the. the I mean, money. I'm gonna I'm gonna complain, but <laughs> yeah. not gonna not gonna complain about the money part of it. Right, because financially, you know, you're doing a lot better than many other people aren't doing at the moment that's another thing i I don't want to come off that i'm unappreciative for still being at work i'm 
I am glad I still have a job, you know, because there's a lot of people who don't at this time. It's like over six million or some sort. That's, Ooh, that's probably that's even more. Object. I think that was like in one day. I think. Wow. Don't quote yeah, me definitely. on that, but I'm pretty sure definitely. that's that might have been in, in a day. That's how many people. Wow. Um, well, it's definitely more than ten million now. That's for sure. Oh, easily. I I, I wouldn't doubt yeah. it. Yeah. But. And so, uh, I, I am grateful to still have a job, still have income. It's just, it's a lot, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, for me, it's it's hard to pass time because, like, when you do something like play video games or stuff like that for an experience. It, you can only play it for so long. Yeah, exactly. And you don't want to play it all day because it makes you feel like you're a bum. You know, oh. it's like... And, and this, these times, I mean... It's whatever you can do to keep yourself busy. You exactly. Got, you got schoolwork to do, all right? That's one thing, but it's not like, hey, me and you, let's let's go to McDonald's, you know? Or Five Guys or anything anything along those lines we, like, literally can't do. We can't. You know, we're, we're resort to do FaceTimes, calls, uh, stuff like that, and that's pretty much all we can do at this point because we can't have contact with each other, and like Tim nope. said, it's oppose a great risk for me and for my mom so you know because so as much as i would love to say hey let's go meet up somewhere different cars even then me in the position i'm in i wouldn't want to put you at risk i put you at risk that's putting your family at risk just like exactly i'm putting my family at risk by working both my dad and my brother are also in essential jobs so they are still working it's just nuts. I guess. Yeah. We're getting into another thing. We're both in college, so having to tra- to uh, transfer over from going to school, physically being in class with a teacher up at front for what? Tw- oh, I, I probably 12, for 13, about 14, fourteen years of our life now. About fourteen years now, yeah. And now having to go to solely online. It's like I've done online classes before, before all this, but this is just at a whole new level. Yeah. I mean, it, having, to, having to meet through Zoom and just have your webcam on, have your teacher there, it's just, it's just completely different. Yeah, it's such a completely different learning style. Because obviously for us, we've obviously had the teacher in front of us for 14 years, and, and it's something that we have never gotten used to. You know, kids that are, you know, way younger than us now are used to that because, you know, they're used to all the technology and stuff like that. So, you know, for us, it kind of was like a learning curve because when we were, you know, 10, 12 years old, that's when we got introduced to iPads. Cause we didn't have iPads to elementary school. We got them probably yeah. probably I, maybe seventh grade, maybe. What, iPhone? Thing. iPhone? No, like iPads. Like we used to like, you know, we used to get the iPads in middle school where we used to do like Oh, but they, yeah, work those, those were rare. Say, is it our, our time in middle school? I don't even know if they had them yet, really. We barely used them as it was. We barely, thing is, though, we barely used like the tablets. We barely didn't really have to use much online. I guess at the time they weren't in the, uh, like, the main curriculum. Whereas now, yeah. you know, at the high school we went to, everyone is assigned a laptop to do schoolwork on. You know, we never had that. No, and that came a couple years after us. Like, we were lucky enough, we didn't even have to do that because we were just, you know, we would go in there, do the work, and they would sign us on the board or, you know, maybe even through, like, Google Classroom because we did have, like, one of those things where we had, like, Google Hangouts or Edmodo for, like, Spanish, stuff like that. But it was mostly for, like, assignments, like, reminders. So it wasn't like we did assignments on there, but it was more reminding. But other than that, like, we never used it online stuff yeah and i mean i just i feel bad for the people high school middle school elementary school who are now having to learn online through google classroom i don't think they use zoom that they they probably use google class no the state didn't want them to use zoom because of the security risk i know i saw that on the news somewhere that there was something about that yeah it's different for like a college and institution but Definitely. I mean, besides Zoom, like for me, I use like uh, Blackboard Collab Ultra. So it's I, like I one of the, that. 
so it's like a little tool thing that, that Blackboard has and where it connects like all the students that are registered in the class and that can go through there and the teacher or the professor will be like right there. Oh, uh, yeah. The thing is, the thing is, is it doesn't automatically put up your, um, like your audio and your, um, uh, your webcam. So what it does is like it like tests it for you, but then you just go in there without any audio or any webcam. It's just them talking. Like you have the, the option, you have the option of putting it on, but obviously they don't want you to put it on because then it causes some sort of lag. So they, they recommend like having yours off. Got you. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's just crazy having, having to do all this stuff online. You know, if I wasn't in an essential job and I, I was out of work right now, I'd literally be right here in my room the entire day more or less yeah i mean be i would be confined like you said you're confined to your house and i mean there's only so much you can do there's only so many video games you can play for so long so many youtube videos to watch yeah before you're like all right what else like what else is there for me to do yeah and it's all parks are closed can't even go hiking you can walk around the block, but that's about it. Yeah, you're so limited on what you can do. It's it's unbelievable. And they're I they're mean, saying this whole the virus. I mean, they're saying we'll peak within the next few weeks, but even then, just because we peak, that don't mean it's over. That doesn't even no. mean we're gonna peak. It yeah. could keep going if they don't. If people don't listen to stay at home orders, and they keep going out for non essentials. That's how this stuff spreads. Yeah, it's and... it's you know, like my um like actually today like my my uh, dad's side of the family actually had like a social gathering like of eight people, but still that's a lot of people to be around because you don't know where every other person has been or yeah, where they don't... have gone to. You don't know who this person's had contact with. You don't know if this person went somewhere. Exactly. That's the thing. You don't know who has it. There are people that are asymptomatic. For yeah. all I know, and they're just carrying it. Yeah. For all I know, you know, where I am working, for all I know, I could have it. I could be asymptomatic. Yeah. You, you just I don't know. You I, and I could be asymptomatic right now as we speak. Because I did have somebody in my, in my store was tested positive for. I think I told you that, right? Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, someone was tested positive for COVID-19. It's just scary because you don't know, did I have contact with this person? Who did they have contact with before they knew? Before they were even had any symptoms? You know, this person I know, once they started showing symptoms, they left immediately, self-quarantined, and went through the process there. But it's still... And it's not even associates. It's all these customers. I've seen people yeah. ha- hacking up a lung in the middle of an aisle. And it's like, all right, do they have allergies? Do they have the cold? Or do they have coronavirus? You, you just, it's yeah. hard to know when it's not like, oh, this is happening elsewhere. It's it's not happening here. No. Yeah. It's happening here. It's spreading in our area, in our town, county, state. It's in our country. I mean, it's it's everywhere. Yeah, I mean, damn. We, I mean, our town where we're from, we have over a hundred cases. You know, it's 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 here. You know, we're trying to do everything we can to not get it. You know, it's like we're not trying to come in contact. Like like Tim said earlier, it's like we want to do something, but obviously we can't because we're trying to do the the best thing for us just to save our life, save our lives, our families. Yeah, because this, this the thing I still see a lot of people not get. This is not the flu. This is not just another sh- strain of the same old flu H1N1. going around. Yeah. No. It, it's worse. It can be deadly. Yeah. It's you know, it's just more intense. It's the thing. It's just more intense. It's more intense than most. Yeah. What, what we see is you know, more elderly, immunocompromised, people who have under, uh, underlying conditions. It affects them worse. But that's still me or you could get it and we could be exactly. seriously ill 
you know, it's not, I'm going to get it. All right. You know, I'll, I'll have a cough, I'll have a fever, you know, I'll get over it. It could be that way or it could not be that way. It could be very serious. Yeah. And just cause same thing, just cause we're young, it doesn't mean we're just going to get through it. No problem. No, it's, 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 and that's the yeah, scary it... part is that there's no set way that this can affect people. Everyone is different. Like we were right. saying, we could be asymptomatic and have it. You could have it and it's like a cold. You can have it and it's just like the flu. You can have it and it can kill you. Yeah. It's a deadly thing. We just, you just can't mess with it. It's, it's just, we just got to follow, uh, excuse me, just follow uh, restrictions. Just got to just follow dis- whatever social they... Social distance yourselves, self-quarantine, limit contact with others, limit the amount of time you spend outside your home, whether it's you know, going shopping. If you have to go out, try to only go for the essentials. I know it's getting nicer out. I'm helping people all the time get bikes, stuff like that. You know, that's just, in my my opinion, that's just putting others at risk for something I don't need right now. Like if right. I'm going to go to the store, oh, you know, I have to stay inside. Oh, I want a new TV. You can buy it online yeah there's still people working in those distribution centers but they have their own safety precautions um set and they're not they're dealing with you know co-workers but they're not dealing with customers i feel that's you know safer for the person purchasing the product and safer for people working it's not let me go to the store and buy a new TV just because, you know, I want one. No. Yeah. I'm only leaving my... Other than work, obviously, as I said, I'm essential. I have to go to work in order for everybody else to come in and feed their families. Which I've... You know, I've been thanked many times. Thank you for coming into work today. Thank you for being open. You guys are heroes. Which, obviously, the real heroes are people on the direct front lines in the medical field. But just no hearing doubt. that stuff, you know, it, it brings you up. Because I'll get those customers that are nasty that don't understand, you know, hey, there's a pandemic going on. How about take it easy? No, I'll, I'll get those, you know, nasty people that just, that just don't care. They'll bitch for no reason, you know, whatever it may be. But then there are those people that will say, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming into work. And that, for me, that that throws anything negative out the window, and it it, it helps. Yeah, it for really sure. does. And uh, going back to what you said uh, before, you know with how deadly this virus is, you know, the number one disease before this coronavirus came here, the number one disease that people were uh, uh, getting killed by is heart disease. And you know, with coronavirus, you know, if you have heart you know heart problems. You know, you're screwed. That's why a lot of the Americans are dying because a lot of these people have heart or lung diseases. You know, all, from, all the underlying conditions. Yes. And and that's the thing is, is you know, it's a, a heart heart disease is the number one death in America. And that's why a lot of people, you know, are dying from this because, you know, they have complications with the heart or with the lungs in regards to previous stuff that happened beforehand. Yep. So it's very tough to um, so I'm saying, you know, that's, what I'm to make, that's what I was trying to make the point. Just because you're young, just because you're healthy. Me and Ted are both young. We're both healthy. But it does not mean we are 100% safe. No. It's like just always a few a weeks risk. ago when it was spring break. People are all still going to these beaches. Hundreds of people on oh, a beach man. in Florida. Clearwater still, Beach, man. Yep. And it's still... Yeah, you're young. I was planning on going summer for spring break. It got canceled. Was I upset about it? Yeah. But at the same time, it it's the safe thing to do. It's to not yeah. be in these crowds and put yourself and others at danger. In danger. Yeah. You're you risking know, everybody around you. You don't you do know if there's like someone in there that has it and isn't showing symptoms yet or has it and is just asymptomatic. You just don't know. Yeah, you just don't know. It's, it's very the uh, virus is very unpredictable. All right, so we're hitting thirty-five minutes, so we'll, we'll wrap it up here, I guess, 
for our first episode. My one takeaway from this is please socially distance yourselves. Yes. Don't go out unless you have to get essential items, food, pharmacy, whatever it may be. Try to self quarantine with by yourself, with your families, your immediate families in your household. Just please practice social distancing. And if everyone follows, this could be over soon. And we can yeah. get back to our day to day lives. The economy, which we didn't even touch that, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, that'll get into another episode of that. You know, that soon. the economy will recover over time. You know, hopefully soon enough we'll all be able to go back to our day-to-day lives. You know, I won't have to fear going into work that I'm going to get something and put the safety of myself or my family in danger. Right. Hopefully soon enough. And everything. Anything else you want to say before we we end this first one off? Yeah, so I just wanted to say, uh, you know, hopefully to back up what you said, you know, it's just to go back to our daily day-to-day lives like go back to the gym or you know without you know worrying about getting a virus or anything like that just you know, just being back to normal you know it's just the main thing and you know it's just got to try to do what we got to do and just follow the social distancing you know guidelines and you know see where it takes us i mean we don't know at the moment but is it working from what i hear it's working pretty good so if it's where if it's going in that good direction, if it's going in a good route, we'll be okay. If everything was as normal right now, things would be ten times worse. Yeah, way worse. So many people would be dying. And like I said, Fauci said a hundred to two thousand, hundred thousand to two hundred people will die initially, but that went down to sixty thousand just because of social distancing. Just because the people are now starting to take this seriously, which yes. I am glad for. You know. All right, so we will end this off. Want to? If anybody happened to find this somewhere on the interwebs, I want to thank you for listening. Yes, you know, thank you. We don't know how often we'll be doing this, but we'll be doing a range of topics. Whether it's you know continuing our own coronavirus discussion or going movies, TV, you know, this yeah. is just going to be an avenue f- for us to talk about a specific topic, whatever. Like I said, whatever it may be. And if you guys have any submissions or anything like that, send them. Like anything just to uh, keep it going. You know, that's uh, that's the main the main uh, main goal. Exactly. All right. Thank you for listening. And I guess we'll, we'll catch you next time. Stay safe, everybody. And please stay healthy.